about 8 30, 8 45. So if you want to leave here, I'll be I'll try and be done by 8 15. And if you want to go over there and watch them and the community center is having them again um thir- I mean uh, Saturday night about the same time. So we are having fireworks here uh locally if you'd like to go check those out. Amen. But we're so glad to see each and every one of you with us for this uh midweek uh service. Uh, thank you for those that are going to be joining us on Facebook tonight as well. We want to welcome you uh, with us. If you're visiting, we want to welcome you tonight. Um, we haven't done this year, we have not done family nights uh, through 2020. Uh, with everything going on, we haven't been able to do that and have our dinner and our fellowship. And one thing that we were going to do this year for family nights is that we were going to let the youth sing and, and the lead the music on those particular nights. So. Uh, tonight, we got a special treat for y'all that our youth is going to be playing instruments and singing tonight. So we're going to be worshiping along with them, of course. So we're excited. we got a great night uh, in the Lord playing. Amen. So if you're able to, let's stand up all over the house. And we're going to get started with a word of prayer this season. So how about we pray as we get started. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful and thankful to be in this place tonight. God, thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, that we live in a country of the land of the free and the home of the brave, Father God. I thank you, God, for the sacrifices that it has taken to give us and to grant us the freedom, the freedom of religion that we have, that we can come into your house, God, anytime we choose or please and worship together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and magnify your name, God. We thank you for the United States of America. We thank you for our church. We thank you, Father, for these young people that are going to be playing and singing tonight. Lord, Holy Ghost, would you just Put a special anointing upon them, God, and move among our midst and uh, touch us as well tonight, Lord. We thank you for all of this, and we give you this service in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, Sister Nikki. Um, they're all really mad at me right now because I made them come up here, so um, I'll pay for that later. But I'm glad they're up here. Um, these guys play for us every Wednesday night. We have our own worship service upstairs. And, um, Last week, our, our message was on worship, and we learned that worship is actually giving your full attention to something. So tonight, I'm asking you to give your full attention to Jesus and put everything else yeah. aside and just give him your full attention and worship with us. This first song is called Start a Fire in My Soul. Um, it is kind of our theme song for tonight, which is our youth group. So y'all join with them and help us sing. Something. 
And the way that he was was to yield this flesh, to submit his flesh and get in order to get it submitted unto what God the Father had for him to do. That's why Jesus prayed like this. He said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, thy will be done. The flesh always wants to run, and the spirit is willing. The flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And so tonight I want to tie this together um, about redeeming the time, but also submission and yielding ourselves unto God. Now, just the way the Lord laid it, laid it on my heart tonight. So let's begin this evening by reading this passage of Scripture in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. We'll begin in verse 15. My Bible titles and heads this as walking in wisdom. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. How many of you know that applies to us today? Amen. We need to be walking wisely. Uh, we need to be walking circumspectly, not as fools, because the days are evil. The Bible has said this. And I tell you, we don't need to be surprised or shocked about what's going on in the world today. Amen. The Bible says there's going to come a time when people would call evil good and good evil. We're living in that generation today. If you don't really know that, but we are. But go on in verse 17 says, Therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord. Understand what the will of God is. Verse 18 says, And do not be drunk with wine, which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he gets to verse 21, Submitting one to another in the fear of God. Let's stop right there with the reading of God's Word. I think I went on past what I told man to write down, but that's all right. Amen. Let's pray for the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Again, we're grateful to be in this house. Thank you for the young people that led us in worship tonight. The Holy Spirit, I ask that you move upon their class right now as they're upstairs, God preparing to receive the Word. I pray that you also would move in here, Holy Spirit, and anoint me, touch these lips of clay that I may speak your word. I pray you touch the hearts of our congregation to receive it likewise. In the name of Jesus, I ask it and pray right now. And everybody said, amen. amen and amen. Paul begins this little passage here under what my, what my Bible title is, Walk in Wisdom. And he says this, that we need to redeem the time by walking circumspectly. Well, let me begin with just that particular verse, and let me give you the definition of circumspectly. Webster says it like this, thinking carefully about possible risk before doing or saying something. Paul simply defined the word itself with his own text when he said, we don't need to be fools, but we need to be wise. That is what circumspectly is, that we need to walk wisely. Paul made a similar statement in the book of Colossians, in the fourth chapter, when he said this, he said, walk in wisdom, walk circumspectly toward those who are outside, outside of the faith, redeeming the time. He says, we need to make the most of our time in these last days. Can I tell you something, that time is a precious thing? Time is a precious, precious thing. Thing. And here in the writings of, of Paul in the book of Ephesians and also in Colossians, Paul instructs us to redeem the time by walking wisely. I want to just take a moment and just, just kind of, kind of, I would say harp on that, but I just want to speak about redeeming the time. The New Living Translation puts it like this, make the most of every opportunity. I put it like this, make the most of, of every day. Time is the most valuable commodity and resource that we have. Amen. And Paul says that we need to make the most of every minute we give. We need to make the most of, of every day that you can that you are have because why you can't get any more time. You cannot get any more time. Our earthly uh, our stay is significantly shorter than we're inclined to think. Our earthly stay is significantly shorter than we're inclined to stay. Listen to what David said. David said this in Psalm 39. He said, Lord, Make me to know my end, and what is the measure of my days, that I may know the frail, how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my day 
that James echoes those words later in James chapter 4 when he says, Whereas you do not know what will happen to Mark, or what is your life? is even as a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it vanishes away. Can I tell you that we need to be mindful that our days are short. We need to be mindful that uh, uh, the days are evil, and we need to make the most of, of every minute in which the Lord has given us redeem the time. Somebody say that with me. Redeem the time. Now he says that and he begins this little passage with saying redeem the time, but then he gets to verse 17, and that's what I want to kind of go to next and speak to you about. Let's look at verse 17. He says, therefore do not be unwise, do not be foolish, but then he says, but understand what the will of the Lord is. He said, if you're going to redeem the time, if you're going to be wise, if you're going to make the most of the life that God has given you, then it, you need to understand what the will of the Lord is for you. Amen. That's pretty clear in what he's saying there. Do you know that understanding what God wants of us is a, should be of utmost importance to a Christian? Yes, Lord. Us. It, I'm going to say that again. Understanding what God wants of us should be of utmost importance to a Christian. I'm going to say that one more time. Y'all get it. So I can say it straight. Say it right. Understanding what God wants of us should be of utmost importance to a Christian. Amen. Now, if I had somebody say amen on that. <laughs> Do you remember when Saul was on the road to Damascus? Saul was on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting Christians. And the Bible says that the Lord showed up on the road to Damascus. And he came down in such a glorious light that it literally blinded Saul who became Paul. And he could not see. And the Lord speaks to Saul and he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul asked two important questions. He said, Lord, who are you? And secondly, he said, what do you want me to do? Lord, who are you and what do you want me to do? Do you know those are the two most important questions that anybody can ever ask? Lord, who are you? Do you know it is utmost important for us to answer that question for ourselves, for us to search the scriptures, and for you to find out and you to know who the Lord is personally for your sake? Who is the Lord? Can I, can I ask you tonight, do you know who the Lord is? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Do you know that well, well, he's that fellow that hung on the cross? He's that fellow that you preach about on Sundays about he died. Or can you say, he's my Lord and Savior? I know him personally. I know him. I walk with him. I speak to him every morning. I speak to him every night. I have a devout relationship with him. Do you know who the Lord is? That's one of the most important questions that you can ever ask. Who do you who is the Lord? Who is he to you? But the second thing that the Apostle Paul asked that is likewise of, of importance, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Have you ever stopped to ask the Lord to take time and ask the Lord that question? Lord, what do you want me to do? That is the question of tonight that I feel that the Lord is drawing me to. Now, there's a lot of answers to that question, isn't there? That's what we would call a loaded question. A loaded question in which I could go a million different directions as I am preaching this sermon. But I want to give you something very simple that, will, that is an answer to every single one of you that are in this church tonight and also to those that are watching this service on Facebook. There is one answer that I feel like the Lord is impressing upon me that I want to share with you tonight. Now, underneath this, when he... When we get this, he speaks about redeeming the time. Know what the will of the Lord is in verse 17. I read 18, 19, and 20 in there. He speaks about singing songs to one another. It kind of sounds like church to me in those few verses there that we read. But then when we come to verse 21, at the end of that little spiel, he says this, submitting one to another in the fear of God. Submitting. Submitting one to another. And the Lord began just to deal with my heart on that passage about submission. About submission. 
And this is about submitting to one another. And, then, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to talk uh, to tie this back together. But the Lord began dealing with my heart about submission, about knowing the will of God for your life. What does God want of me? And I got to thinking about that word of submission. Then I thought back to James chapter 4, verse 7. It says these simple words. Submit yourselves to God. Submit to God. Resist the devil. He'll flee to you. Flee from you. He simply says, submit to God. Will you say those words with me? Submit to God. Do you know the one thing that God desires and asks of every single one of you that are in this church tonight, including the pastor, including you that are watching here tonight, and the desire that God has for you is that you would submit yourselves unto Him. What is God's will for you? You know, a lot of times we think we ask all these big questions when it comes to the will of God. And I'm going to preach on something next week about the will of God. But sometimes when we ask, Lord, what is your will? We think about, you know, what is your will for me? A lot of young people ask, Lord, what is your will for me about a career and a job? What is your will about my ministry? Or who am I going to marry? You know, you ain't been thinking about that one. Have your eyes there. Thinking, who, what is your will for me? And who am I not marry? Or what if we think of these big things? But God showed me this very simple thing tonight that I believe that he's calling us to and calling our church to, like I've been preaching over the last several weeks. The will of God for you is to walk in submission. Yes, Lord. What does God want for you? What does God want for you? Young and old, in between, God desires for you to walk in submission. You need to write that down. What is God's will for you? To walk in in submission. To submit yourself unto him. He says in James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. God's will for our lives is to walk in submission. Do you know what? Jesus Christ walked in submission to the Father. Yes, he did. Jesus Christ Walk in submission or obedience to the Father. Yes. Jesus was not down here for 33 and a half years doing his own thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Right. Jesus was not down here for 33 and a half years doing his own thing. Every time from the age of 12 years old. Do you remember what he said when he was 12 years old? teaching in the temple, and his mom and daddy couldn't find him, and they come back and kind of got mad with him. They said, why did you put us through this? He says, don't you know I've got to be about my father's business? He told the disciples, and he told over and over and over again, he said, I have come to do the will of the who? The father. When he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane, what did he say? Thy will be done. He wasn't down here for 33 years doing his own thing, just trying to go about having life. He was there to submit himself to the will of the Heavenly Father. I'm telling you tonight, what is it that God wants of you? What is it the will that God has for your life? First and foremost, above everything else, is to submit yourself unto God. We need to get that in our mind. That's what Christ did. He is our perfect example. And in the same way, we are to submit ourselves unto the Lord. Now, what does that look like, Pastor? What does that look like? When you say, submit myself unto the Lord. Well, let me give you three things tonight. Number one is this. We are to submit ourselves unto His Word. We are to submit ourselves unto His Word. On multiple occasions through ministry, I've had people come to me and ask me, like, how do I find God's will for my life? How do I find God's will for my life? And in most cases, it's these big questions. You know, they're talking about their life uh, with their job or career. They're, they're young kids getting out of high school, going to go into college, and they've got to make decisions that might affect them for years in the come and all those things. Do you know what I found, and I'm going to preach on this later, about those things like that? Those big, big things. That if we will get ourselves submitted to Him, do you know what? He'll work those things out. Yes, He will. Amen. Instead of just getting so overwhelmed, trying to figure out, okay, exactly what I need. 
things, if we just submit ourselves to Him, all those things just seem to work themselves out. That's right. God will give us an answer. This stuff we get to, uh, to confirmation about. He'll, he'll reveal those things in time. But what we need to be concerned about more than anything is being submitted to Him. And first of all, we need to do that through being submitted to His will. The first thing we need to learn to do is to be submitted to His will. I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me today and I was preparing this. He said, my people need to learn to submit themselves to my revealed will. Yes, Lord. For some reason, we're always looking for what we don't have. Ever thought about that? We're always looking for what we don't have. And God spoke to me today and said, my people need to learn to submit themselves to my revealed will. This is God's revealed will for your life. Amen. That's right. There's a lot of
We're to submit ourselves to the Word of God. We're to submit ourselves to the leading of the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, he says. Can I just point this out? Paul speaks about, this is in the same passage that we just read. If you've got your Bibles open, he speaks about redeeming the time. He speaks about verse 17, knowing the will of God for your life. And then he gets to verse 18 and he says, don't be drunk with time. That is, don't be drunk, drunk with time. Don't be drunk with wine. Do you see that that is connected with foolishness and wasting time? Being drunk and plastered is not wise and it's a waste of time. Amen. But he says instead, he compared, he says, don't be drunk with wine, don't be drunk with liquor, don't be drunk with fear, don't be drunk with uh, corona, but he says be filled with the Spirit, he says. Look at Galatians 5, 16. Paul says this, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I, look, I like the way the Amplified Version puts this, and it has little quotations there. I actually found this on accident. My little Bible app was all still Amplified when I looked it up instead of King James, but I found it, and I found it interesting. He says this, but I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, and then it has the kind of the, the commentary on that, responsive to, controlled, and guided by the Holy Spirit. It is walk in and live habitually, continually in the Holy Spirit. That means be responsive to, be controlled by, and be guided by the Holy Spirit. What does that say? He said you need to be submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying. Be submitted to the leading, to the prompting, to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. He said that when you do that, when you're submitted to the Holy Spirit, he says it's going to help you, keep you, from fulfilling the cravings and the desires of the flesh. It's kind of what I've been preaching. I preached the other day. It reminded me of the words of, of Jesus of, in Matthew 26, 41, when I read that Amplified Version. Remember what Jesus said? Remember what Jesus said to Peter, James, and John in the Garden of Gethsemane? When, when, when Peter, James, and John was over there sleeping and Jesus went to pray and he come back and he finds them sleeping, he said, you can't pray just not even an hour. And he tells them, watch and pray, lest you what? Enter into temptation. The spirit of need is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I compared how Peter, the difference between Peter and between Jesus. Peter spent the night sleeping. Jesus spent the night praying. Peter, that same night, failed to be surrendered to the will of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. He's cutting all beers. He, he's uh, denying Jesus on many occasions. But Jesus, on the other hand, because he's prayed through, submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit, submitted to the will of God. Do you know what? He's cool as a cucumber when they come to arrest him. He's silent as a lamb as he stands before the various judgments in which he has to go through. Why? He's prayed through and he's ready to go. Understand, we must watch and pray. We have to understand we've got to get connected to that Holy Spirit and yield, Lord, his prompting to his leading to that still small voice. I don't know about you, but God still speaks to that church. That conviction that comes into your heart, that still small voice, that's the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And he don't just speak to this old preacher, but he speaks to you as well. Do you know that what I thought about, speaking about submitting to the Holy Spirit, this is God's will for your life, submitting to the Word, submitting to the Holy Spirit. You know what I thought about? Speaking about prayer, tying that in with what Jesus said. It's really in prayer that you begin to learn, you will begin to learn the voice of God. It, 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 it is in times of prayer and quiet when you're not listening to everything else, you're not listening to the music and radio, and you're not listening to other but it's just you and God, and you're spending up devoted times in prayer. Do you know how many sermons that God has birthed into my spirit through times of prayer? It would be a thought, it would be the voice of God would put a reoccurring thought 
in my mind. And brother, brother, when I began to write that thing down, and God would begin to speak to me, I learned, I learned those promptings through times of devoted prayer. That's what I'm saying. It's through prayer that I learned to, that God would put somebody on my heart and I would I would get to learn that prompting in my spirit. I need to pray for that person. I need to pray for this. And he would bring things up. It's in times of prayer that we begin to learn the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And we learn it. Then when we learn it in our quiet time, you can start learning it. You'll discern the voice of God in the hectic times during the day on your job because you've been in prayer and you learned his voice there in the quiet. You'll be able to hear his voice when all hell is assailing you and everything else is going wrong. But you'll hear that still small voice saying, I'm right there with you. Take this step. Do this. He'll prompt you and guide you and lead you and teach you all truth, John said. Amen. We need to walk in the Holy yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit. A huge part of that is learning that voice of God. Learning that voice of God. And the idea that it's going to just happen without you spending any time of communion with God. How many of you know somebody ever calls you for the first time on the phone, maybe the second time, the third time on the phone? You something I've I had. A, they think that if you, ever, if you ever had somebody call you on the phone, you didn't know them really that well, and they know you and you didn't know who it was. <coughs> you know what I'm talking about? You hate to ask them, but like, who is this? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I had people call me, and I guess they just. You, just, just, just assume that I know them if their number ain't stored in my phone, and they just go to talking and tell me about problems, and they'll tell them, hey, wait a minute, who are you? Because <laughs> I don't know them that well. I don't know their voice. I'm not used to, to the way they're talking. I don't know who they are because I've not spent very much time talking to them or communicating with them. But when my daddy calls, I know his voice. Amen. Come on now. Yeah. When he talks, he ain't nobody, no, nobody talks like him except me. Amen. <laughs> when my dad, I know his voice, don't matter from whose phone or not, I know his voice by the time he be wise because we spend a lot of time talking together. When you spend time in prayer with your heavenly father, when you keep communicating, you will begin to learn the voice of God. Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from? You begin to learn that voice when you spend time. And you sometimes feel like, I can't, I don't, I just don't hear the voice of God. You don't never spend any time praying. You never spend any quiet time. You never spend any time alone with God. And, and you've always got the radio on. You're always watching TV. You're always on your phone. You're always on, on everything else. And you wonder, wow, ah, God's drowned out by every other voice in the world. Ooh, let me get off that and move on to the first. Number three, we are to submit ourselves to one another. Speaking about redeeming the time, making the most of the life that God has given us. Part of that, Paul says, you need to know the will of God for your life. If you're going to make the most of the life you've been given, then you need to know the will of God. I'm sharing with you of the will of God for every one of you in here tonight. It is to be submitted to God. In those three parts, be submitted to the Word of God. Secondly, be submitted to the Holy Spirit. The third thing that I'll point out that Paul says here, be submitted to one another. Isn't that what he says in verse 21? We, we probably like the other two better than we like this one, though. But Paul says they're submitting yourselves one to another. Do you know that's just as important? He said, well, Pastor, what exactly does that mean? Talk about submitting to, to one another. Let me read another scripture from Paul in Philippians chapter 2. He says, let it nothing be done through self with ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each other, uh, each esteem others <coughs> better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. In other words, here in the book of Ephesians and in the Philippians, we're, we are given a picture of humility. 
When it speaks about submitting ourselves one to another, we're, speak, we're speaking of humility and we're speaking of lowliness of mind. You know what happens when people will look at themselves in that light through lowliness and through humility, willing to be a servant to other people, willing to serve in whatever capacity that they have been given, whether it's a wife serving the husband, whether it's a husband serving the wife, whether it's the children serving uh, the family, whether it's uh, uh, on your job where you're serving in harmony with your boss. Do you know what happens when we think of loneliness and we have humility and we're willing to be servants and to serve one another? Do you know what happens? Harmony begins to happen. Peace begins to happen. Unity begins to happen. When people are willing just to serve and to work in the position uh, that God has given them, and there's, there's a willingness in their heart, and there's not this pride and this arrogance, and we don't, we've got, we always got to be in control. But we just will to serve and be submitted. Do you know what harmony begins to take place? Is there anything any sweeter or better than harmony and unity in a family? What's that next scripture, Amanda? Psalms 133, Behold how good and love, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. When it comes to the house of God, when folks are just willing to serve one another, isn't it a wonderful thing? You know, when the Apostle Paul writes this about submitting to one another, can I remind you that when you submit to another person and that author whatever authority it might be, do you know you're not just submitting to them, you're submitting to God? Yeah. Paul expands on this thought of submission on earth in the next verses. In Ephesians chapter 6, and it's not going to be put up there, I'm not going to read it all for you. you got your Bibles, you'll see it. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm sorry, that we just read, when you get to verse 22 and go through verse 33, do you know what all of those verses are about? It starts like this in verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husband. And then later on it speaks about husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Really it's talking about wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands, but also in the same way, husbands are going to submit themselves unto their wives and they're going to bless them and give them the needs and the desires that they have as well. Then he goes on from there and the beginning of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. He talks about children obeying their parents and being submitted unto them. How many of you know that when a husband and a wife will work together, there's unity in a home? Yes. Isn't it a lot better when they're submitted to one another and working together on the same page yes. than instead of one trying to rule the roost? You just remember, men, you always remember this fact. You might be the head of the house, but she's the net and turn today, amen? God meant for you to work together. You are the priest of the home, and you should be a spiritual leader. You should lead in spiritual things. You should take care and supply for your family and all of those wonderful things. But I want you to understand it's a partnership between you, her, and God, amen? Then he speaks about the children submitting unto the parents. I don't care how old you are, but you should always honor your parents. That's right. Amen. I don't care if you're 65 and they're uh, 85. Your mom or daddy is always going to tell you what to do. If you ain't figured that out by now, <laughs> my goodness, where have you been? Amen. That is just what it is. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> I've mowed grass all of my life. I've mowed grass all of my life. I had a business for years and years and years. And then when Daddy retired about five years ago, he, he started helping me. And Brother Jeff, would you guess he tried, he told me certain things that I needed to do. <laughs> I've been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> but, but I started thinking, well, we need to do this and we need to do this. I know I'm going to get to it, amen. That's just a mom, that's just a daddy, that's just a mama, young people. That's just what they do. I'm telling you, if you ain't figured that out, just smile and go on and do it, amen. Honor this. Submit one to another. When you do that, you're not just submitting unto them, you're submitting 
unto God. Because that's a God-given authority in which he has established. The next thing he talks about there in the following verses, 4 through, I can't remember what it is, 4 through 9, he speaks about masters and bond servants. We apply that, though we can apply that to those that we work for. Those on your job. Sometimes the boss does not need your opinion. I, I know you're smart and all, amen. I know that you see exactly how it should be done, but however he says to do it, why don't you just go on and do it, amen? amen. amen. I had a lady one time, this lady I used to mow yard for, and I had two or three people. She was looking for a yard man because she couldn't keep a yard man. And they told me, said, you don't want to work for her. You do not want to work for her. She's a picky, picky, nasty lady. You'll never satisfy. You will never. I said, I'm doing her. I went over and looked at the yard. I give her a price on. She told me exactly what she wanted me to do. I give her a price according to that price. Do you know what I did? I did the yard exactly how she asked me to do it. You know what? I had her until I, I I kept her for several years until I quit. I just did it the way she wanted me to do it. It's her yard. She paid me good money. I'll do it the way you want to. I'll mow it backwards, honey, if that's what you want. Come on. Come on now. Sometimes we get up on our little ego trip. Amen. And we think that we know better than the person that's in authority. It's not what they're going to do the job. Amen. Amen. Woo, submit to authority. And things like go to I'm not saying you can't uh, voice a pin every once in a while. Or, or how about this idea? But sometimes we try and be the boss and we ain't the boss. Amen. Woo, let me get off that grave. <laughs> so get it. When you are submitting to that authority, you're submitting unto God. Yeah. And it brings on you. Friends, let me close with this. Y'all be coming before I get on another. <laughs> Friends, Paul said that we need to make the most of the time we've been given. Walk wisely. Walk circumspectly. He says in order to do that, you need to know how God wants you to do things. You need to know, verse 18 says, you need to know the will of the Lord for you. Well, I know this for certain about the will of the Lord for every single one of you in here today. It is to be submitted unto Him and His authority. That means that we submit ourselves unto that Word. We submit ourselves uh, unto the leading and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. And thirdly, we need to submit ourselves one to another. Because you know what? When we're in harmony with one another, doesn't things flow better and time is not wasted and we're not arguing and we're just getting the work done? Amen. Do you understand why, he's, why I'm putting those three things together about redeeming the time, knowing the will of God? Well, the will of God is for you to be to walk in submission, submission to that word, submission to the Holy Spirit, being a submissive attitude and a serving attitude to one another because it makes the most of the time that we've been given. Let me close with this thought about our Savior. Is that not the type of attitude that Jesus had? Yes. As we read in the scriptures. Is that not the type of attitude that Jesus had when it came to the word of his Father? He said over and over again, I've come to do his will. I, I've come to do his will. I, I, thou will be done, he prayed in the garden. <clears throat> Was Jesus was Jesus not submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit? Yes, Lord. Wasn't he? Yes. Do you remember what Matthew chapter 4 says? When Jesus, after Jesus was, was baptized and he come up out of the water, you remember what happened? The Bible says a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. Yes. And at the same time, a dove, the Holy Spirit, excuse me, in the form of a dove, comes out and anoints Jesus. After his baptism and anointing of the Holy Spirit, there in his baptism, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days. Jesus was submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit. 
Think about that third thing. Was not Jesus submitted to one another? Wasn't he submitted to one another? Wasn't, wasn't he a, didn't he have a heart of a servant? Didn't he wash the feet of the disciples? Any of y'all want to wash my feet tonight? <laughs> Miss Peggy, you want to up? Come on now. I just took a bath before we came. Maybe we good. Didn't he wash the feet? Of, was he not uh, had the attitude of submission? He was willing to serve wherever he was at? Think about when it came to the government. Did not Jesus say when he took that coin in his hand, whose inscription is on this? He said, Caesar. And he said, well, render unto to Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. Amen. So we see a heart of submission from, uh, in Jesus, whether it had to do with the Father, the Word of the Father, whether it had to do with the Holy Spirit, or whether it had to do with who he was around, and even the government. He was submitted. He had a heart of submission. You see where I'm coming from tonight? He had a heart of submission. And I'm telling you tonight, that's where the Lord is drawing us tonight, is to be submitted unto Him. Jesus is our perfect example of a submitted life. Therefore, let us follow in His footsteps in, the, in this way. We're going to make the most of the time we've been here. Stand your feet. Amen. We're going to close tonight with an altar call. And if there's something on your heart or mind that you need to pray about, there's something, as I was preaching, you know, the Holy Spirit has a way of pricking our hearts and beginning to speak to us. And so maybe tonight, if the Lord began dealing with your heart about an issue, that you need to pray about, and I'm going to encourage you to come to heed the voice of the Holy Spirit. Maybe you need special prayer about something that's going on in your life tonight, then I want to ask you to come as we close this evening with this song. But walk in submission tonight. As we sing, we'll sing a version of the chorus. Love.